Hi guys. So today we're at St. John's Graveyard and it's right in the heart of Wexford Town. And there's a Redmond mausoleum just dead ahead there that I want to show you. But first I'm going to point out a few of the older graves. We have an 1838 here, James Byrne of John Street, and that's the street we're on right now. There's a Catch and Burn, 1876. Walter Roach, 1826. We have 1818 there, Edward Bryan. There's 1791, aged, sorry, 1794 maybe, age 62, and it's Thomas Hayes. And you have to get a key now to be able to get in here, um, because it's completely locked up, and the local county council take care of it. Eighteen seventy there, William Hayes. And there's Mary Hayes, eighteen sixty seven. And there's one of those old coffin structures that we've seen before. So that would be very old. We have a tomb there that's completely broken up. Richard Cleary, 1798, age 75, John Breen. 1837 and he was 84 would you believe and that's a gorgeous headstone and it's in remarkable condition and I was told to be careful of my step because it's very uneven in places we have a 1760 here Alice Armstrong and she was 55 when she died and that's Quite an unusual one. It's like a tomb, but the headstone is there. Eighteen twelve. Peter Hoare. He was forty-three when he died. Francis Hoare, seventeen ninety-eight, and Mary Hoare, eighteen o one. And the condition of these is actually really, really good and very easy to read. Susan Jones, 1850, and she was 30 when she died. Seventeen ninety-one. It's Murphy. I'm not sure. Anthony Murphy, seventeen ninety-one. He was forty-eight. And Mary Murphy, who departed this life February 1812, age 60. We've two railed graves here. I'm not sure we'll be able to read these ones now. There's a Joseph there, all right, and a John, but I can't see the date. And that one in there, I have no way of getting into. An iron cross. And we have some little markers. And we see this one here as well. A little cross on it. And this is Peter Tyrrell, I think it is, 1793, age 47. 
just have a look there at that mausoleum. Look at the structures and the beautiful decoration on the, the rooftop. We have another big grave here. I'm not sure we'll get in to read it. We'll try. 1827. Patrick Ryan. And he was 67. And there's Catherine Ryan there as well. She died in 1845 and she was 68. An iron cross. Nothing on that one. And there's more of those grave markers. Lovely cross here. Very hard to read. <clears throat> There's an 1805 on this one. Ellen Margaret. Or actually it's Ellen McGrath maybe even. Quite hard to read. So we have a line of markers there. And one here. eighteen seventy two on that. I think it's William Rossiter. Erected by William for his wife Eleanor. Eighteen seventy two I think that's so we'll take a a closer look at the mausoleum now in a second. Once we read a few more of the headstones. 1870. It's William Kelly, possibly, and he was 59 when he died. Uh, Margaret Roach. Of Wexford, also their son and daughter. But I don't see a date at all on it. But another one that has lovely designs up top. Eighteen fifty five on that one. And I think that's Margaret Power. Nice iron one there. More markers. Directed by Philip in memory of his three children, John, James and Mary, but the date has gone off it. Eighteen fifty nine and eighteen forty five there's Sylvester. Rest in peace. Um, 1851 there, age 75. Matthias, Cody it looks like. And you can see again in the background there that huge mausoleum. And we have once again the butterfly following us around. And he's quite colourful. The camera will zoom in on him. Now. Eighteen 
Erected by Walter Broders, postman, Wexford, in memory of his mother, Eleanor Broders, who died the 20th of April, 1850, aged 81, and his sister, Jane Root, who died the 7th of January, 1835, and she was 32 when she died. So there's something on the wall down here as well. The ground is very, very uneven. Let's see if you can read this. I can already see a date, 1884, age just 25. And it looks like, pray for the souls of jo Johanna Larkin, 1884, age 25, and Sarah Larkin. 1896 age 48, James Larkin, 1896 age just 21 I think it is, and Patrick, 1898 age 55. So that's just on the, the wall at the back. This is Elizabeth Dorn, 1888, age 37. memory of his wife Catherine who departed this life 1845 and she was 52 and also his two children Sarah died March 1845 and Patrick died April 480 sorry Sarah died March the 22nd 1843 aged just four and Patrick died April the 4th 1843 aged two so it looks like brother and sister died the same year and maybe about a month apart and we have i don't know what's going on here it's like several headstones on top of each other and that have been broken at some stage there's an 1806 there and it looks like Joseph O'Connor and Mary then died in 1896 so you can see the mausoleum just there so before I show you the mausoleum this one just caught my eye here it's erected by Thomas Dempsey John Street in memory of his beloved son Thomas Dempsey aged is it that's a g e d months or is it age six months but the the surname of his father and the child's name are spelt slightly different we have d e m p s e y and d e p s e y here and that looks like it's age six months that's very sad and it's remarkable how well the, the headstones have held up and the writing is so clear. But we're bringing out to the mausoleum anyway and it's a huge structure. And you can see the design on top of the roof. It's almost something like you'd see on a, a castle. And it's for the the Redmond family and we have two different inscriptions here Edward Redmond and Anne his wife Patrick Redmond son of the above who died June 1799 aged 29 John Redmond died the 18th of January 1822 aged 52 Walter Redmond 1822 aged 54 Eliza Redmond wife of John 1837 Mary Redmond, wife of Walter, 1839, Esther, 1847, John Edward, 1865, Margaret down the bottom, August, 1866, William Archer Redmond, November, 1880, and he was 55. And then we have an inscription in the middle as well, but it's it's too hard to read but i wonder is this what it says and they've just 
redone it. Here lie the remains of John Edward Redmond, MP, MP for Borough of New Ross, 1881 to 85, North Wexford, 1885 to 1891, Waterford City, 1891 to 1918, and Chairman of the Irish Parliamentary Party until his death, which occurred on March the 6th, 1918, when he was 61. Also his son, Captain William Archer Redmond, D.S.O.T.D. MP for East Tyrone, 1910 to 1918, for Waterford City and County in 1918, till his death died at Waterford, April the 17th, 1932, aged 45. So quite a number of names there. But I'm not sure that all of them are in the mausoleum, even though it does look big enough to hold a lot of people. And we have a fantastic door. And unfortunately, I don't have a key for that, which I would have loved to have had. And it's almost like walking into the doors of a parliamentary house and maybe that was the actual logic behind it and you have the pillars there as well so i've been wanting to come into this graveyard for quite a while and my father actually used to work cleaning up the graves around here in wexford town and told me lots of stories about it and Wexford Corporation still take care of it but unfortunately I can see there now that there's tins and stuff and that's possibly why it is closed to the public but um, any details I find and I know there is a lot of details about the Redmonds because we have several areas in town named after the Redmonds. We've Redmond Square and we've the park as well, Redmond's Park. So there will be lots of information that I'll put over the video. There's a 1767 here. Um is it that's unusual. Fogatier, I think it is, and maybe J A S, but I know sometimes it's short in the name, so it could be Jason, age 60 years, also six of his children. So, six children, 1840, there. There's a Francis Murphy and a James Murphy, and it's very strange that the the covering is coming away from them and eventually it'll be very hard to read but for now I can see 1839 aged just nine um, and it says erected by Alice Lacey to the memory of her beloved child James Lacey who departed this life July the 11th 1839 aged nine also her brother John Sullivan, who departed this life January 11th, 1842, aged 49. Her, and her father, James, is there as well. He died in 1842, aged 80. And her mother, Elizabeth, and I think that's 1855. And she was 98, so great age. And also her brother, James, down at the bottom there, he was just 22 when he died. And it looks like 1813 there. So you'll also notice how tall these are, and I'm sure that's above six foot. And look at the lovely detail. We have Gloria here. It's just beautiful, but unfortunately this one as well is, is starting to, to peel away. And we've already read that, that was James. But look at the, actually just have a look at that. The H and the design on it. Here lieth the body and I think this is Jason and it's Fogger Tear maybe Fogger Tear and there's the date 1767 and six of his children rest in peace 
and I've seen a few of these as well but I've never actually been able to read any of them and in front of me we've 1798 and that's Anthony laughing so that's all guys from St John's graveyard I put in the information over the video as always thanks for watching and God bless